Hey everybody, it's Mycosymbio coming at you with another video update for Mycosymbiotics. And what's been going on? Let's see, lots of things. Um, we're gonna we're in the lab, the home lab uh, here in New Cumberland, and uh, we're gonna be doing some renovations in here. And we have been uh, just installed this shelf. Um, for anybody that's uh, following on our Instagram, uh, Mycosymbio, uh, you would have seen the picture over the past few days where I was like, can't reach the door. Uh, the whole floor was filled uh, with all these spawn bags. So I had to go out and make a small investment. Uh, it was about 30 bucks and I got this five tier shelf and it's holding lots of spawn right now then keeping it off the floor. Uh, just giving me a little vertical space in the room. Uh, so that helped out a lot. And um, if you also uh, had been following on Instagram or Facebook, uh, you would have seen uh, this morning, I've been working on the flow hood uh, with my father that we're going to be getting in here probably tomorrow night. Uh, we're letting it dry overnight. Today is Friday, August 20-something, can't remember. But yeah, i um, going to be working on uh, installing the filter part. We got the whole frame made. And we got a circle cut out in the back so we can mount the uh, inline flan uh, fan. Uh, we got a hurricane inline fan we're going to mount on the back and uh, get that filter installed in the front. And we're gonna get that in here and replace this glove box. It's been an amazing tool, um, but right now I'm just uh, working with so much spawn that I really need to get in front of a flow hood. And I'm um, also really uh, getting into cloning and uh, culturing and uh, various types of fungi. And I really, really enjoy working with liquid cultures and I just needed a little bit more space uh, to it to work. So. Um, the glove box is awesome for anybody that's just working on uh, providing fungi, uh, mushroom, medicine, food uh, for yourself, for your family. It's a really, really great tool. Or if you're just doing a little bit of clone work and stuff like that, it's an awesome tool. I mean, in commercially, um, especially in Eastern countries like India, Philippines, uh, there are large scale mushroom farms where they are still using still air boxes, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so I don't knock the still air boxes at all. Um, but it was just time for me to move on to a flow hood. Wanted to give a shout out to uh, our good friend, Kurt Henry, uh, for helping us out with that. And uh, yeah, so um, got the shelving rack. Um, working on some really cool uh, mushroom ladder uh, shelves for the fruiting room. Uh, we are finishing up insulation over there, getting some spray foam in on the cracks. I'm going to be doing an update video on that here this weekend. I'm going to be working with our uh, partner, Patrick, uh, Patrick Bowman, awesome mycologist, uh, up and coming out in Pennsylvania, uh, working with us at Mycosymbiotics. Uh, keep, uh, keep an eye out for him. He's going to be uh, getting into the festival circuit and mushroom workshops and all these kinds of things. Uh, I mean, and also check out his music. I mean, he's super, super awesome guitar players. So, um, yeah, aside from that, um, we got the mushroom ladders. I'll get a, some video clips in on that, and we're going to get that in once we get the uh, rest of the insulation up, get our plastic sheeting in, which will probably happen this weekend, and we're going to fill that up with all this spawn we have here. And, uh, oh, check this out. We have these uh, popsicle sticks fully colonized. We're going to be uh, inoculating some uh, spawn bags with these. That's really cool. We're going to be getting rid of this. Probably going to have to get a little bit of a bigger table to put the uh, flow hood on and uh, store more of our uh, liquid cultures. Probably going to have to get another uh, mini fridge. Uh, but yeah, you can see our cultures down there. Uh, I'd rather uh, have another mini fridge um, to hold our liquid cultures and have them grow a little bit slower. Uh, keep them a little bit more fresh. So we're probably going to get another mini fridge in here very shortly. Um, we have the Cordyceps Militaris found by Charlie Aller uh, growing on some uh, potato dextrose agar. And it's very, very white mycelium, very radial, uh, very beautiful. And we have some Ganoderma tsugae that is culturing um, as well. It took to culture. Uh, we cloned this from a mushroom that our friend Jenna from Lies and Lathers uh, have been um, 
Shireman's Town. Uh, she found that actually um, at, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I'll, I'll let you know if I remember. And we have the Rishi growing here, uh, starting to pin out form antlers. Uh, same same species here. Uh, this is the one that our friend Jared Sowers found at Pole Steeple that we believe to be the Curtisii. So I just have it labeled GPS, uh, again, in our Pole Steeple. But uh, Jay and I, uh, Jay from Fun Drive for the People, we've been calling that the Wookiee uh, just has such white uh, mycelium, fuzzy looking mycelium. So yeah, we've been calling that the white Wookiee or red Wookiee because uh, he's about to produce these beautiful red mushrooms. Uh, but yeah, we have these uh, growing super crazy uh, Ganoderma lucidum from Fungi Perfecti. Um, just waiting to see what it does to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Um, mm -hmm. We also have this the same uh, Ganoderma lucidum from Fungi Perfecti that's forming antlers in a more uh, orderly fashion. And uh, awesome, awesome uh, Rishi here from uh, Smugtown Mushrooms forming some antlers. And I'm going to cut this open here soon uh, so it conks out, get some beautiful looking conks. Uh, we have shiitakes here. Um, if you follow my Instagram, we just uh, poke some holes in here to create a convection. Um, I got that tech from Trad Cotter's book. So uh, the CO2, which is heavier, will be falling out of the uh, holes that we poked right above the spawn block. And it'll be pulling in oxygen through the filter patch. And over the next couple months, it'll start browning out. Um, we got some mines main. Um, some Pleurotus pulmonarius, the Phoenix oyster. We've got some Namako going. Got more of that in my closets down there. Uh, lots and lots of grain spawn I've been, I was working on the other day. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's show you that, uh, that mushroom ladder. All right. So we have the mushroom ladder. Uh, we have four, uh, individual, I mean, we have two about 10 foot pieces of, uh, of paracord tied together and created a rope ladder on uh, uh, either of them. And take our mushroom blocks here uh, when we're ready to group them, or if we just need some extra sp uh, space for uh, colonization, spawn run. I don't like the word. archaic in a bad way, but uh, yeah, we need to do spawn run or want to fruit our mushrooms, we can uh, slide these bad boys on in here, and we're going to get a lot of these going for our fruiting rooms uh, over in, in uh, Hershey, our Hummel's Town. Uh, location. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, this one can hold six blocks. Um, but yeah, this is how we're going to be rocking out uh, at our fruiting rooms. All right, in the fruiting room, uh, we got lots of Rishi antlers. Uh, these are in the process of turning red. They were more yellow uh, about a week ago. Um, we're still having a little bit of issues with the CO2, as you can see from this uh, lines main, as well as the way that this pink oyster is forming with small caps. Um, let's see if we can get a focus on that. And um, yeah, we've been trying to manage the oxygen levels in here. There is a lot of spawn blocks in here. Uh, what we're going to do is get a plant and stick it in there, possibly coffee. Um, Coffee is an understory plant in rainforest, and uh, lots of CO2 builds up in the under canopy of the rainforest, uh, and there are certain plants that are more acclimated to that and only will grow in more humid and high CO2 environments. So I'm going to put this coffee plant in here and uh, see how it works out for us. So stay tuned on that. All right, everybody. Just wanted to wrap it up with the an announcement on the Urban Micro Design course. Um, really, really pumped about it. 
Um, you can check out more information. We have a few dates, uh, some coming up in uh, the beginning of September. Um, there's going to be one in November, and there's going to be one in March. Uh, you can check our website, mycosymbiotics.wordpress.com, to get all the information. And it's going to be super awesome. Uh, we're keeping the class sizes small, about 15 people, uh, to make sure that we can acknowledge everybody and uh, get to uh, help people out on uh, different things that, that, is, that they're interested in. Uh, we make sure we send out emails uh, prior uh, to uh, coming to class uh, whenever you register um, to see it, what it is that you're interested in learning about, uh, how we can uh, tailor our workshop to meet your needs. Um, and make sure that you learn what you need to learn about the fungi. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm super, super pumped about it. Um, we're going to have our uh, facilities up and running so that everybody can uh, come check that out. Uh, for the workshops and uh, see what it looks like when you renovate a uh, regular old space, a garage, uh, old barn room uh, for mushroom cultivation. So that's pretty cool. And um, then we're going to teach you all the ins and outs about uh, urban mushroom cultivation uh, from my own personal experience, um, from the knowledge I've gathered, uh, traveling around and uh, learning in all the various workshops that I've gone to and meeting the various people that I've met. Um, and just going out there and living. Uh, so yeah, had lots and lots of fun. Uh, we're gonna be learning cool stuff about liquid cultures, um, how you can do that at home, uh, creating your own spawn, uh, grain spawn, uh, medicinal mushrooms. Um, there's so much that you can learn with fungi. Uh, and I've been learning so much and I'll admit I'm learning every day. I mean, if somebody says that they know it all, then they're probably lying. Because one thing my grandfather told me when I was little is that he was still learning stuff every day. So, I mean, there's still stuff to learn every day. And I'm just getting my mind blown all the time by all these awesome people out there doing a bunch of awesome things. Uh, not just with fungi, but uh, permaculture, uh, social movements, um, political rallies, lots of grassroots movements, people growing their own food and learning about uh, self uh, rely on self-sustainability, uh, but I don't really even believe in using the word uh, self-sustainability uh, because there's no true uh, self-sustainability. We always need to work uh, with whole systems, uh, with other organisms, with other living beings, and make sure that we can work with our fellow humans. So as much as the fungi is important, and working with the fungi and partnering with the fungi and being mycosymbiotic and being that mycosymbiote, uh, we must be symbiotic with everything. And I just want to leave it with that. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, share on Facebook, Twitter, uh, your favorite mushroom blogs or permaculture blogs. Um, make sure that we can get this word out and uh, share the information if you go check out that uh, Urban Myco Design course. Again, that was at the mycosymbiotics.wordpress.com. Uh, I really, really appreciate everybody that's uh, following along on all the progress. So it's been another Mycosymbio video, Propagate in my seat.